Well, it's great to be back uh, recording a video with Antonina again. It's, it's been a while since we've been able to do this for various reasons. So we're going to share an absolutely beautiful case with you. Now, it's a, a lesion on the shoulder of a 22-year-old male. And what you can see on this low power view alone is is uh, this, it's almost like a dome-shaped papule uh, with uh, a lesion in the underlying dermis, and then there's another bit down below. But anyway, I'll enlarge this to make life much easier. And here, th this is a quite a nice overview where you can see the, the uh, papule and there's some hyperkeratosis on, on top. And then we have, uh, we have multiple nodules of, of tumor. And let's, let's have a look at those a bit more closely. Now, up at the top, uh, it's quite nice, actually, because, um, uh, let me just get this slightly straighter, that, that's better. It's quite nice because you can see there's a, a dense infiltrate of fairly um, uniform cells with obviously very abundant uh, cytoplasm and round to oval nuclei with uh, small nucleoli. And there, there's a cell there with a sort of a ground glass cytoplasm and there's another one there. And um, I suppose one of the thoughts you would have to think about in a lesion like this is whether it might be melanocytic. And if that was the case, then these, I, I suppose, might make you wonder whether this might be a BAP1 inactivated nevus. So that's, uh, now the thing is though, mind you, we don't really have any, any junction activity. So that, that would be a little bit against that. And the other thing I, I, I think one can have a look at in the deeper bit, here the cells are a little bit more plasmacytoid. Uh, there are some very nice cells right in the center where the, the cytoplasm is almost a little bit purple and the nucleus is eccentric. And so, uh, you could uh, wonder about um, some plasma cytoid light tumor and uh, a myoepithelioma would come into the differential. Myoepithelioma being um, a sort of like a, a mixed tumor without any of the glandular differentiation. So you're just looking at the stromal component. So that's another thought. Now, if we look um, elsewhere, it's really, this bit's very pretty because um, I think this tells us the diagnosis without any too much bother because you, you can see there's a lot of tumor and um, it's got a syncytial growth pattern it's forming these large interconnected fascicles uh, with some connective tissue in the middle. Um, and uh, that, uh, I think that does put you in the direction of a syncytial myoepithelioma. And I, uh, I'm trying to think, there's a mitosis there, but then these things have to grow. So a mitosis doesn't really necessarily matter too much one way or the other. And again, some of the cells are plasmacytoid. I suppose you might wonder about some sort of a histiocytic lesion, but I'd be hard pushed to think of one that would grow in this, have this growth pattern. And I think that's really, let me just check. Uh, this, this is another piece of the tumor and it shows really pretty much the same features. So um, 
I'm going to look at some immunohistochemistry that we have available. And we've got, um, uh, I'm just trying to read the labels here. Uh, it is. That one is S100, no, yeah. Is this, S, is this S100? It is S100 and EMA presented okay. in. I think this one is S100, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, now look at that. Isn't that absolutely good? Well, we can tell it's S100. We've got all these Langerhan cells up here. Gosh, they're in a state of frenzied activity. I have no idea what that means, but it must mean something. And there are the tumor islands, beautifully, beautifully uh, positive for S100 protein. That's absolutely gorgeous. So that would, um, well, uh, obviously one has to think of what S100 positive tumors there might be. And you, you certainly still have to think of a melanocytic lesion, I think, but as I've mentioned, the growth pattern below and the plasmacytoid cells puts me more towards myoepithelioma, but uh, one has to have an open mind. And this, I think, is EMA, um, which if it is, it should be positive in myoepithelioma. So we'll just have to hang on. I've got to click on that better. Gosh, well, that's pretty impressive, too. Uh, or have I? No, yes, yeah, yes, this is EMA. EMA stains the epidermis, as you see up there, which is, which is normal. You would, if you like, it's a good internal control. And there's the tumor. Now, isn't that just to die for? This is a beautiful case. If you haven't seen this before, well, then your Sunday is made because you're not going to see anything better. Even if you watch Netflix, it won't be as good as this. So uh, my, my take on this is a cutaneous myoepithelioma, which are typically EMA and S100 protein positive. And uh, uh, keratin, I would expect to be negative in this, but Antonine is going to educate us a bit on this tumor. And so I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk any more about it. So Anthony, you know what, what I'll do is I'll close case center now and uh, uh, get back to Zoom. And we need to, we need to get us back. Can you put us back to the position where you and I are occupying the full screen? Yeah. Just, uh, you have to stop sharing the screen. Uh, no, that's very good. I don't know how I do that. Right. Well, well. Uh, just let's okay, do it. Again. Okay. Uh, and uh, I have to say that it's, uh, it is very easy case when you see it at least once somewhere. For us, it was a very difficult case, and we were searching for the right diagnosis for a long time. We exclude almost everything that comes to our minds, and it was, uh, as you said, it was a melanocytic lesion. We stain SOX10, we stain HMB45, it uh, appeared negative, and then we come to hysteresitic lesions and uh, exclude almost everything, including Langerhans cell hysteocytosis, because there were a few uh, A's in the fields, and we were thinking about the diagnosis too. And um, interesting enough that uh, we stain ALK to exclude epithelioid fibrous hysteocytoma. It was also right, negative. Yeah. And uh, we uh, left with nothing but for we have to search something that looks like that and um, stain for S100 and EMA. And I saw your and Professor Weiss post in a Twitter and it helps me to 
find out what it was. And uh, for this particular tumor, it, 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 is, uh, it was described only like a few years ago. It was a big review by Professor Fletcher where they described uh, 38 cases with different histology, but the same type of histology. It, it was syncytial, it was neoepithelial, and it, it was uh, described very well. And they were searching for particular mutation in that tumor. And they found out it was very interesting. I just want to show everybody uh, this, uh, this case, uh, this article, just to show that it was a very good article for somebody who wants to read it. It is absolutely a um, good one. And just a year ago, it was an article about a molecular presentation of uh, this tumor. And, uh, Professor Fletcher group uh, showed that tenuous syncytial myepithelioma has a very interesting rearrangement in UN sarcoma gene one, and they even found a, it, it was quite long time nobody knows exactly the fusion partner of this tumor, and they found out that it, it is mostly PBX3 uh, gene and uh, they described a series of cases with such rearrangement. So it is also a very interesting article, and I have to say that they, uh, they show exactly the same histology, that tumors show exactly the same histology. It is blend monomorphic cells that proliferate in syncytial way. So, it is that tumor that we want to share with, with you. And Philip, do you want something to add? Um, well, no, I, I, I think it's, uh, it's fantastic to, to have, um, uh, to have a, a molecular counterpart to the diagnosis. Uh, it really, it, 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 I find that very, very exciting uh, indeed. And uh, yes, I think Chris's paper is absolutely superb. So I think, uh, I think what will, I think we probably discussed all that we need to. So I, I hope everyone's enjoyed this uh, presentation and um, uh, I'll, uh, I'll close the recording now. So thank you very much everyone for thank watching. Thank you. And um, uh, now I've just got to find out how I close this um, recording. Oh gosh. <laughs>